It's been pretty cold this last week. Okay, really cold. When it's this cold, strange things begin to happen. Okay, so I don't mean frost zombies from the lands of winter takes three decades to write. When the polar vortex invades, the sky fills with halos and rainbows. Trees can get magic coats of ice, and your pipes freeze. Well, this sucks. And your car won't start, and your dog doesn't want to go outside. Hey, Tucker, what do you think of this cold, huh? You like going potty when it's this cold? <laughs> no, not a fan? <laughs> oh, I didn't think so. Shake. Shake. Okay, go oh boy. Let's get your treat. But let's talk halos, hoarfrost, and polar vortexes. You've seen a snowflake before, unique six sided crystals of water ice. But there's a more perfect formation for these ice crystals a hexagonal flat plate of water ice. When sunlight is refracted through the edges or reflects off the faces of these crystals to the tune of billions in an otherwise clear sky full of them, this light finds extra meandering and fancy paths through the sky before finally reaching your eyes. The two most common types of these lights are sun dogs and pillars. The flat sides of these crystals above and below the sun from your point of view, create tall jets of light above, and if you are flying or on a mountaintop, below as well. On the other hand, the edges of ice crystals refract light like a prism, giving the sun a couple companions, called sun dogs. Other names for sun dogs are mock suns, and its formal name, parhelia, which in Greek means next to the sun. Extreme cold temperatures in the upper atmosphere, in an ice cloud, and water ice jet contrails can produce them, but so can drifting snow, ice making machines at the ski resort, or even just ambient ice crystals present in extreme cold arctic air. This latter example produces some of the brightest and often make a predictable appearance during a polar vortex event. Another common form is the 22 degree halo, a circle around the sun 22 degrees of sky away from the sun under the right conditions. At night, it's possible for a bright moon or even the planet Venus to cause some of these same effects off of ice crystals. Next time it's super cold and the sky is blue, take a look outside and see if you can spot some of these. There are much rarer forms of atmospheric optics, and I'll link to those below, such as parhelic circles, tangent arcs, and circumzenith arcs. Many of these require very specific sun angles, near-perfect ice crystal conditions, or special crystal shapes rarely observed in nature. Another fun thing that can happen in extreme cold is hoarfrost, or also known as rime frost. Now this phenomena occurs when fog is present in sub-freezing temperatures, and this is enhanced by a gentle amount of wind. For hoarfrost to occur, you need saturated air, that is 100% humidity. Instead of dew forming on surfaces, frost forms, because the surface is below freezing. But rather than a light layer of frost, like what you scrape off your windshield in the morning, ice fog will leave several layers of this frost on trees, vehicles, and any cold object it can stick to. With a small amount of wind, this can produce elongated crystals that stretch away from the object it is attached to. Look for rime or hoarfrost on foggy, frozen mornings or around steamy, warm rivers, streams, or even storm drains on cold, clear mornings. In December of 2018, a sudden stratospheric warming event, or SSW, was occurring over the Arctic. This is the calling card of polar vortex breakdown ready to happen. Far above the Arctic, the stratosphere warms considerably by more than 50 degrees Celsius. This can lead to a reversal of upper atmospheric winds causing the polar vortex to split or move far away from the poles. As is typical, a couple of weeks, or in this case, about a month later, an invasion of Arctic air pushed well into the United States, causing Arctic cold temperatures down into the Midwest. Forecast models pick this up as much as two weeks ahead of the event. This week, the temperatures plummeted to 20 degrees below Fahrenheit, and when combined with the gusty winds that came along with it, the feels like or wind chill managed to fall to more than 50 degrees below Fahrenheit. Like overdone moon names, like the super blood wolf moon eclipse a couple of weeks ago, the polar vortex and all of its adjectives are just sort of a hyped up word salad for something that's actually always been happening and is pretty common. The polar vortex is normally an area of cold air and low pressure sitting over the Earth's poles. Normally this low pressure is quite strong and stays over the poles. Storm systems that bring snow to the Rockies, Midwest, and Nor'easters to New England rotate around this vortex following the jet stream. If the polar vortex is strong, this super chilled air remains squarely over the poles, bringing enduring frigid air to Siberia, Alaska, and far North America. But there's plenty of variability. 
Sometimes this vortex weakens, allowing warm temperatures to invade northward, while Arctic air pushes southward. A common place for this to happen, especially in recent years, is over Alaska, which has had unprecedented warm winters for the last several years now. Overall, this vortex breakdown, for a time, makes the Arctic warmer. While this polar vortex breakdown is totally normal and even predictable, climate change is allowing this breakdown to occur more frequently. This is preventing this cold air from sitting over the locations close to the poles where it belongs in order to generate heavy Arctic Ocean ice cover and glacier regeneration. The moral of the story is, polar vortex breakdown just means colder weather in locations not accustomed to polar air, as well as an overall warmer Arctic. Too many vortex breakdowns, some of which are affected by climate change, result in shorter but occasionally harsher winters for some locations while warming the Arctic. The poles are getting bullied a bit by climate change. An invasion of polar air brings us all a glimpse of our planet's extremes, beauty, and power. Watch for more hoarfrost and ice halos in the coming months and coming winters, knowing now why they form and when to start looking for them. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, hit like and subscribe. The content on this channel is extreme weather videos, astrophotography, space weather, everything outdoor science observation using my own footage and photos as b-roll. And that's all because I love to get outside and learn something new. All right.